please be seated. Fear is such a crippling emotion and we carry it in our bodies and express it in so many different ways. Some of us, when we get afraid, get angry and nasty, lashing out at people. Others of us, when we get afraid, coil up on ourselves and isolate so that we don't have to be with others. They don't have to see us in our fear. Fear can be personal and collective. Right now, I think we sit in fear collectively about the health of our country and what may be happening, uh, whether violence will erupt, since 20% of us think that violence is a legitimate way of settling difference. It also can be deeply personal. Fear can cut to our heart and our bones so that we seek to anesthetize ourselves with drugs or alcohol or sex or other ways of numbing out so we don't have to name the fact that we are afraid. We carry our fear in myriads of ways. In the gospel this morning, we encounter disciples of Jesus, 10, since Judas is gone and Thomas is not in the room, who are afraid. We're told in the Gospel of John that they're afraid of the Jews. I think especially in these days we need to talk about what does that mean in this context. John is written at a time when Jewish Christians um, are, have been cast out of the synagogue. They're no longer seen as Jews, but this other religion. As long as followers of Jesus were seen as faithful Jews, they enjoyed the protection of the Roman Empire uh, because Judaism was a recognized religion of Rome. But once the claims of Jesus as Christ and as, as the Messiah became uh, declarations of faith of Christian people, the Jews no longer could um, tolerate that within the boundaries without jeopardizing the whole Jewish community. So what we're hearing in the Gospel of, of John, and this was true in Good Friday and especially true today, is a group of people that are afraid. They've seen what has happened to Jesus, the persecution and the torture and the death. They've experienced the expulsion from the synagogues and the vulnerability of being alone, and they are scared. The other thing we see in their response is that some of them are dealing with their fear by coming together behind this locked door. They're together to pray, maybe, to share stories, to let out their feelings, uh, to have the strength of solidarity with others. That's a response to fear and grief, that sense of coming together. But we're told that Thomas wasn't there. I wonder whether Thomas was feeling sad and that his way of dealing with his grief was to separate himself out, to go into that closet alone, to see how he could lick his own wounds, comfort his own heart. Maybe he was afraid of being associated with his former friends and colleagues. Maybe he wasn't sure whether he had made the right choice to follow Jesus along the way. Grief carries lots of forms. Fear takes lots of shapes. Of course, the ultimate fear for us is death. Death can be our physical bodies and the failing and flailing that we do as organic creatures. Death can mean the change of relationships that we have come to rely on and cherish. Death can mean um, stages that we're leaving to begin a new thing. We're all afraid of death on some level of some form. 
By this time, many of you know that um, I've announced my retirement, and if you didn't know coming in, you know it because Ashley announced it to you this morning. I am afraid. I've never retired before. <laughs> so while um, friends, even in this room, have said it's really a rewiring, and it will be great, and you will enjoy it, and I will trust that that is true. I don't know that. What I know is I've spent 18 years loving you all and being together with you. And since the time I was 27, I've been a pastor. My whole life has been the priesthood. I know that I had life before and I will have life after, but I don't know what that is. My hunch is, you may feel some kind of way. I love that expression. <laughs> because with some kind of way, you don't have to fill in the blank. People just do it for themselves, right? Because you know how you feel. But I also know as I look out that we've lived a lot of love and a lot of life together. And it's a big change. And you may be afraid and sad. And you may be wanting to come together, and you may be wanting to step back, and you may not be sure of who this community will be without me as rector, because I'm the only one you've ever known. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Jesus appears in that locked room with those folks that are cow cowering in fear, to say peace, peace be with you. And then Jesus does something very reminiscent of God. He breathes on them. <sighs> <laughs> You'll recognize that. <sighs> it's, the, it's the breath of creation. God breathed and spoke, and that is how the world came into be. We breathe life. We breathe peace. We breathe love. If you've ever given birth or been with someone who's given birth or thought about it or watched a movie about it, <laughs> many of us will never have a baby in this room. You know that breathing is about managing pain. If you follow your breath, you become calm and peaceful. And while you may still have pain, it does not overtake you. Breathe. Jesus invites his friends to come and see and to receive the Holy Spirit that they can breathe in God's peace and presence and out their fear and anxiety. They breathe in love and trust, and they breathe out a sense of foreboding and impotence. That is the life of faith. Which isn't to say we're not afraid, which isn't to say it doesn't hurt like hell, which isn't to say that we never feel feelings of uncertitude or anger or resentment or selfish greed, like what about me and what about my feelings? How could you do this to me? I can imagine these feelings and those are real, but they're just feelings. Faith goes deeper than those feelings. Faith says life is God's way and eternal life is our reality now, even while we may be feeling anger and uncertainty and fear and whatever else it is. It's also Thanksgiving. Thomas doesn't stay away. He catches his breath and he comes in behind the closed doors with his brothers and probably sisters because they were there first. They're just not named. And while his brothers and sisters may have been judging him, 
Jesus does not. Jesus doesn't say, why weren't you at church last week? I didn't get to see you. Instead, Jesus says, welcome, Thomas. Come and see, come and feel. You're one with me. And you're one of us. We're heading into transition, just like those early disciples were. But our challenge is even deeper, which the Gospeler of John recognizes, because we have not seen his wounds or put our hands in his side. But we get a taste of eternal life in and amongst each other. Not all the time, but enough. Thomas responds, my Lord and my God. It's a statement of faith, and it's the only place in the Gospel of John that Jesus is called God. I believe that. I believe that eternal life is what we live together. I believe that God brings us peace and gives us strength and breathes on us so that we can be creative, that we can have hope, that we can witness to wholeness. These next weeks are going to be really hard. I'm just going to say it, because I've loved you long and well, and I have been loved long and well. And I've got to say goodbye, because I've got to leave so a new person can come, because that's the way it is. If you hang around as a ghost, you don't get eternal life. And I want eternal life. And I want that for you. So here's the deal. Not the deal. Here's one deal. So I came to you having never been to Texas because Zach Copeland had been a member of my church in Nashville and said to the search committee, you should reach out to her because she could know somebody. I would never have been looking to move to Houston, Texas, ever. But because Zach told somebody on the search committee you should reach out to her, they did, and the Holy Spirit led me here. You can reach out to somebody. You guys are smart and connected, and you know people. And the people you know know people. And the Holy Spirit's going to lead you to the next right person. I know that as sure as I'm standing here. Because peace is not up to me. And the mission of the church is not up to you. It's up to the Holy Spirit moving among us that we bear witness to. With faith and hope and sometimes fear. May we make this transition together with confidence. Amen.